Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of predictions, specifically how we can make predictions from simple experiments and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So we have a pretty representative sample problem here. A teacher is asking students in our first period class to name their favorite snacks. We have our responses here. So then we're going to use that sample to make a prediction about all 200 of our students. So she's not going to make uh, as all of her students answer. She's just going to ask a small sample her first period. And she wants to know if everyone else responded pretty much like that first period class, what kind of predictions could we make? So this is going to be our small sample. We're going to use this sample to make a prediction about a much larger sample that we are not going to ask all 200 for. So first we need to figure out how many students are in this sample. So let's just add up our responses here. So that's going to be 10, 17, and 8 is 25. So we've got 25 students in our first period class, and she's going to make some predictions about all 200 of her, of her students based on how these 25 students responded. So what kind of predictions can we make? Well, we can always predict about, it's not going to be 100% positive until we ask all 200, but about how many students would choose and then look at these answers, right? So let's take Takis, for example. If we want to make a prediction about, about how many out of the 200 students would choose Takis, well, let's make a proportion. Out of our small sample, we know that we had eight students choose Takis out of our total 25. So let's just make that into our uh, proportion here. So we have a total of 200. And then let's just make the number X going to be for our number of total Takis. Well, we could always do a little bit of cross multiplication, right? Eight times 200 is going to equal 25x, right? So that's going to be 1,625x, divide both sides by 25. And we could do that to get our answer, but what's going to be a little bit easier, x is going to be equal 64. So we could say, all right, so 64 students will probably pick Takis, but what would help is if we need to find anything else is let's figure out what is what is that scale factor. So 25 cents is a quarter, right? Four quarters make a dollar, which is 100 cents. Eight quarters is going to make 200 cents. So 25 times eight is going to make 200. So if we multiplied by eight, we can get that equivalent fraction. So eight times eight makes 64. But that's just going to be easy for us to say, well, let's just multiply everything by 8. Since 200 is 8 times larger than 25, we could just multiply all of these by 8. And we can at least get some predictions as to how many students would choose each of these. So we got 32. And we've got 8 Funyuns. We're not 100% sure, but this is at least one prediction that we can make. We could say probably about 32 students would choose Doritos, about 8 students would choose Funyuns. Now, another type of prediction that we can always make is how big these are relative to each other. And we don't necessarily even need to know uh, these numbers for that. So we can start looking for patterns. So let's take our Flamin' Hot Cheetos, right? So our Flamin' Hot Cheetos is 9. And our M&M's is 3. So you notice that this Flamin' Hot Cheetos is 3 times larger, right? That's going to equal 3 times our M&M's. So we could probably say that if we were going to get all 200, that our Flamin' Hot Cheetos is going to equal 3 times whatever that M&M is. So we can look for that pattern. We could do the same thing, right, with our Doritos and our Takis, right? So our Takis are 8, and our Doritos are 4. We say, you know what, that Doritos is going to be half of our Takis. So even with we have all 200, we can say Doritos is probably going to equal one half of our Takis. And we see with our numbers here, right, our 32 was half of our 64. So another type of predictions we can make is how large one answer is in response to another.